For this video, we take a look at part B. If you react four moles of H2 with one mole of O2, according to this equation, which reagent runs out first? This is a picture-perfect BICPA question. The purpose of BICPA, which I discussed in an earlier video linked to below, is to identify the limiting reactant. In other words, the reactant that runs out first. Now, BICPA does not by itself identify yields or amounts of product. You have to go through BICPA to identify the limiting reactant first, and then from the limiting reactant, you can then jump to the amounts or amount of product or products, whatever the case may be. But the purpose of BICPA is essential because everything comes from the limiting reactant. And that's what this question asks. It says that we throw in four moles of this, one mole of that, and asks which one runs out first. In other words, which one is the limiting reactant? Now this equation and the amounts are simple enough that you could probably do this just by eyeballing it. Nevertheless, I'm gonna take you through the full BICPA process so that you can understand how to do it because the fact is, if you know how to do this process well, you can navigate through any problem, any reactant problem like this, or any limiting reactant or theoretical yield or yield question, and identify and get it right 100% of the time, okay? And I wanna make this easy so that you can do this, all right? So step uh, B, I guess, of BICPA is balance the chemical equation. According to principles we discussed in an earlier video linked to in the description below. Conveniently, this equation comes to us balanced so we're done with step B. Step C is convert everything to moles. So if you're given amounts in grams or something or in volumes or something, you have to use dimensional slash unit analysis principle that we discussed in an earlier video linked to in the description below in order to convert everything to moles. Now, conveniently, this is given to us in moles, so we're already done with uh, convert to moles. The letter P stands for pick one, meaning pick a reactant. You can pick either of the two reactants, the process ends up being the same, but given that I did an earlier problem where I picked H2, I'm gonna pick O2 here, okay? So let's go ahead and pick O2. Now we're done with step P. Now we go to step A, which is really where things get exciting. Step A, answer the question. If I have one mole of this reactant, how many moles of the other reactant do I need? So we picked O2, so we're gonna write down one mole of O2, and I wanna discover using dimensional analysis slash unit conversion how many moles of the other thing we need, okay? So units here in the denominator are gonna be the same as the units in the numerator of the previous term, so I'm gonna write down moles of O2 in the denominator because I have moles of O2 in the numerator here. Can I directly relate moles of O2 to moles of H2? In other words, can moles of one thing moles of another touch? The answer is yes. Moles and moles can always touch. As gross it is, as it is, I always try to imagine a mole on my skin touching a mole somewhere else on my skin. It's gross, but the visual helps sort of focus it in on your mind, calcify it in your mind that moles and moles can touch. Grams of one thing, grams of another thing can never touch. Grams of one thing and moles of one thing can touch if they're the same thing, okay? But moles and moles can always touch, which is why I always go through moles. So I can directly relate moles of O2 to moles of H. And this is what I mean when I say they can touch. It means that they can be put in the same set of parentheses, okay? Now what numbers go in here? Yeah, the numbers are the uh, coefficients here in the balanced equation. So I've got a two next to the hydrogen, and I've got a one, not written but implied. Anytime you see no number, it's an implied one, next to the O2, so I'm gonna put one right there. So moles of O2 and moles of O2 cancel each other out, and I'm left with two moles of H2, all right? So part A we've just done, or the first A of Big Pie Gas, it asks if I have this many moles of O2, one mole of O2, how many moles of the other thing, H2, what I need? And the answer is two, okay? Now we go to the second A in BICPA, which is, do I have at least that many moles of H2 in this scenario? And the answer is yes. It tells me that I have four moles of H2. So I only need two moles of H2 in order to react with my one mole of O2. And I've got extra H2. I've got four moles of, o2, of H2, which means what? It means that O2 runs out first. So O2 is the limiting reactant. So it will react, the one mole of O2 will react with two moles of H2 to produce two moles of H2O, and the extra H2 just floats around after the reaction's over, kind of you know doing its own thing, I guess. That makes sense? So that is the answer to our question.